There are two questions that people ask me all the time when they're starting film photography. First, which camera should I buy? Second, which film is good? So the question might be wrong, but still people ask me which film is good, which film is the best. So today I'm going to give you the overview of color films and also I'm going to share my five favorite color films as well. Let's make some coffee. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new in film photography, one of the hardest thing is choosing films. There are lots of different films in different brands like Kodak, uh, Fujifilm, Lomography, Lorelei, etc. But before you're choosing film, I think it's good to know the overview of the films. So basically for the color film, you have a two different type of color film. First, negative and second, positive film. So color negative film is most well-known or common type of films. It is called negative film as the light exposure and color in the photos are quite opposite in the negative. So I'll show you the example. So this is an example of actual color negative. So generally this type of film has a great latitude and dynamic range. So then what does it mean by latitude and dynamic range? The dynamic range is total range from the darkest shadow to the brighter highlight that camera can capture in a single photos. Latitude is a range within dynamic range where you can expose and still get the reasonably usable image. So basically, color negative has a great latitude and dynamic range than positive film. It means it is more generous in terms of exposure, so it can be easier to shoot with. Second, these type of films are easy to buy and develop compared to positive films. Also, in my opinion, if you starting film photography because of its unique film look, I think mostly it's a negative film's characteristic, like a bit of grains and a bit of vintage tone. So on the other hand, color positive film is also called as color reversal or slide film. Unlike color negative film, this type of film create a positive image. So like this. So if you have a close look at this film, you can actually see the photo itself. So generally this type of film has much more vibrant colors and it also has a extremely fine grains and produce a sharper image. So it is more looks like digital image rather than film vintage look. And it tend to have a more accurate color because you can actually see the color. So when you scan it in the computer, you can calibrate with this color. But the problem is it has a less exposure latitude, which means it can be a little bit difficult when you're starting out the film. Also, it is usually expensive and you might find hard to find the lab to develop. So this is a very brief overview of um, color negative and slide film. And this is my five favorite color films. So first, I don't have it here, is Fujifilm C200. So this film, I haven't used it recently as it is usually my go-to film for my family or travel. But as we all know, we are struggling with the COVID restriction at the moment. This is one of the consumer level color film, which was pretty cheap, but I think it's a big shortage from the Fuji film at the moment. So it used to be seven Australian dollar, but at the moment, some people are selling 20 to $30 per roll, which is ridiculous. But anyway, as similar to other Fujifilm film, it produces a beautiful green tone. It has a bit of cool tone as well. Due to its price range, it's often compared with the Kodak Color Plus, which I bought it recently instead of C200. This one is also consumer level color film from Kodak. So in my opinion, if you're shooting people, you might want to start with a Kodak rather than uh, Fujifilm C200 because of the price range at the moment. And also it's bit, I think it's a bit easier to deal with the warmer tone rather than cool tone. It's just my recommendation. It can be a bit boring as everyone recommend and talking about this film. So this is Kodak Potra 400. It comes with the 400, 160 and 800. But this film is just beautiful. 
It has a saturated warmer tone. But one of the other reasons that I like this film is that it has amazing latitude. And when you overexpose, the results are beautiful. So I use this film for all sort of photography, daily, street, portrait, landscape, and travel. Only negative thing is price. As it also comes with ISO 400 or 800, it gives me more flexibility based on the weather condition. So next three films are the one that I mainly use for landscape photos. The first one is this one, the Kodak Ektar 100. So in my opinion, this film is made for landscape photographer. I've heard that traditionally landscape photographers will prefer to use a slide film due to its fine grains, colors, and better quality. But unlike other Kodak films, Ekta has a realistic but bit saturated color tone. Also Kodak said it has the world's finest grain, which is quite true. And the quality out of this film is great as well. So whenever I loaded up this film, I'm pretty confident that I'm going to capture what I wanted to capture. And my next film is this Fujifilm Velvia 50. So it comes with a 50 or 100, but I've been using 50 all the time. I think this is my, the most favorite film for landscape. So as I mentioned, this is ISO 50 slide film. It's quite slow. It produced the most vivid and rich color in film, I think. To be honest, it exaggerates colors to pop out the photos. I've done the comparison about this film with the portrait last year. I love to use this in nature photography, like rainforest, mountain and coastal area rather than city. But for city, I prefer the portrait for warmer tone, at least in Sydney. And the last but not the least film is also slight film. This is a Fujifilm Provia 100F. This is ISO 100 film. Compared to Fujifilm Velvia, Provia produce more natural color tone. It is known to be good for both portrait and landscape, but I haven't really tried it for portrait. If you use this film, especially sunset or sunrise, this will produce a beautiful image. But somehow I used most of my star trail work with this film. As it is slight film, it has a very fine grains, but also it produces a natural color tone. So I think it is perfect for star trail. But I still use for general landscape photography as well. So I'm not sure who is watching this video, but if you're new in film photography, Try to use lots of different film first before you choose your favorite. In this way, you can find the characteristic for each films. And if you have been shooting films and you have your own favorite film, feel free to share your favorite film with a reason. I'm still exploring more films like Cinesteel films or Raw Light, but these are my favorite at the moment. Hope you enjoyed the video and also helpful. If you enjoyed, please hit that like and subscribe. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next video.